This is what Second Chronicles 20 is all about. Giving God glory. Giving God praise. In season, out of season. Thank you. Our choir, the ministry of music, and our drummers. <laughs> Thank you, PJ. God is good, y'all. He is worthy of all the praise. Amen. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Father, we praise you and we thank you. Your blessings, God, upon your word, your message, your people. Destroy what I thought and replace it with what you want it to be. Deliver, set free. Lord, somebody needs to be ministered to your word. As Minister Mitchell said, you've been ministering all service long, but there's something they want to wrap up the wound with. You, you gave them the balm already, but now we need to wrap it in your word. So have thine own way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of this message is Why Praise God. Why, why praise God? A lot, a lot of folk don't want to praise God. They, they don't think it's any use in praising God. So, some people won't even come to the praise and worship part of the service. They, they don't think it means nothing to praise God. I don't, got, I don't have to praise God. And I come to let you know today you made a big mistake uh, not learning how to praise God. You know, why, why praise God? I, I don't need all that. Just give me the meat. Give me the word. No, you do need some praise because uh, Psalm 22, 3 said, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. And that word inhabitest in the Hebrew is yafav. That means to inhabit, to dwell, or to stay. Simply saying what God is saying, one of the places that God dwells is in the praise. One of the places that God hangs out is in the praise. Amen. So you don't need no praise, you don't want to praise. It's not so much about how you praise him, it's if we praise him. Amen. Because everybody does not praise God the same way. Matter of fact, there is no recipe, there is no, no order structure, there's no instructions as to exactly how to praise him just as long as you praise him. And I come to let somebody know today that uh, when you praise God, God inhabits the praise. He dwells out in the praise. He stays in the praise. As we dig more in Second Chronicles 20, you're going to find out what God did in the praise. But I need to let somebody know that in Second Chronicles 20, what God did was he sent a problem for everybody so he could speak to somebody. Sometimes God will send a problem for everybody so he could speak to somebody. And it's not always a pastor, not always a king. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But, but he inhabits the praise, the praise to let God know that, God, I, I need you to show up. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, how many know that God is omnipresent? That means he's everywhere present at all times. But how about his manifest presence? That means that his omnipresence messed around and showed up just for you. See, when he manifests his presence, he shows up in your situation just for you while he's still being omnipresent. See, when he showed up for me, he was still uh, hanging out over the woods house. See, he's omnipresent, but see, I praise him, and he began to respond to my praise, so he manifests his presence in my praise, but he was omnipresent over there, because he had already taken care of them, and they were doing all right, so he remained omnipresent over the woods house, but over the carpenter's house, he manifests his presence, because we were praising him, because we had a situation. But why praise God? I tell you, we all need to be praisers. There's something about praising God. Praise is important. Praise is one of God's dwelling places. Why do you think the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It wasn't just something cute to say. The psalmist meant that thing. See, David knew about praising God in season and out of season. Amen. See, because praise means that God's going to hang out with you when you're doing well and hang out with you when you're doing bad. 
praise? Why praise God? Why, why, praise, why have a praise ministry? Why have a praise team? Why have a young adult praise? They just standing up there hollering the microphone. No! They're letting God, they're sending God a message. Say, God, guess what? I need you. I need you, Lord. I need your power. I need your presence. I need you to manifest yourself in this service, God, so we all can be blessed, so we can all be ministered directly by thee. God inhabits the praise. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. Guess what Judah means? Judah means praise. How are you going to be the king of something that ain't doing it? He's the king of praise. And the folk ain't got no praise. This is fill up your prayer praise and worship to the church. God gave us that name. Some people ask, where you get that name from for so long? I said, look, just, just put PPP and WCC Incorporated on the check and I will cash it. We can ca you ain't got to get all deep. You got to put it all, it ain't going to fit, so I ain't going to write the check. PPP and WCC, acronym it, baby, acronym it. Why do you think people had these songs or had these things about praise your way through it? Yeah. It sounds like that's crazy, but what they're trying to say is you, if you understand praise and understand that God, that God dwells and inhabits the praise, then you praise your way through God. He will manifest himself. His omnipresence will be a manifest presence. He will show up and get you through that thing. He will be right there with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But if you don't never let him know through praise, that you really need him, he might not show up. See, God, see, see, you got to understand what God does. God has manners. He's not like some of us just show up and talk about what you got for dinner. God has manners. If you call him, yeah, if you call him, amen, he will, in fact, show up. But if you don't want him around, he's not going to barge his way in your life. He's not going to barge your way in, but if you sit there, you ain't never got no praise, no hallelujah, no thank you, Jesus. Only if you can see it, then there's something wrong with your praise. Because praise is, is a continuation of my relationship with him. My heart shall be filled with praise. My mouth shall be filled with praise. And all the psalmist is trying to say, no matter what goes on my life, God is worthy of all the praise. Because if I don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. So much. I don't want no rocks to cry out for me. Jehoshaphat, he was like us. He, he took over the throne after his father, Asa. But they were good kings. They were like us. They were human. They did a couple things wrong. But the record records that they were very good kings. Jehoshaphat, he was, he, he was hooking up with the wrong kings, the evil kings, and they got with him about that, you know. And then he got his house in order. But then we get to Second Chronicles chapter 20, he said, it came to pass. After he received, you know, his warning, got his house in order, the enemy got busy. And then in, in, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, you're going to look at the problem, the prayer and fasting, and the praise. The problem, the prayer and fasting, and the praise. The problem, the prayer and fasting, and the praise. If somebody here has a problem today, look at Second Chronicles 20, look what Jehoshaphat did, look what God did, and look how God just delivered them out of this situation. They were in war and never had to fight, never had to shoot an arrow, never had to punch, never had to move. As a matter of fact, they had the nerve to mess around and had the choir put the rose on and put the choir out front. That, who ever heard of a choir leading somebody in the back? For his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Let's look at this problem. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. See, when you're doing good for the Lord, folks want to come against you in battle because they're jealous of what you're doing. And God was blessing him tremendously. And they got upset. They said, we're going to go against him. We're going against him and all his people. And look at verse 2. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazion, Tamar, which is in Gedi, which means they're close. You ain't got no whole lot of time to be calling up your cousins from down south to come on up to help you fight. This, this thing, <laughs> by the time they get here, plane, train, boat, you know, horse, dog, whatever, by the time they get here, they got a problem. The king had a problem. And Jehoshaphat feared. But he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. He said, look, we got a problem. The king said, if I got a problem, then you got a problem. 
because I'm king. If I can't handle the problem, then we all got a problem. Sometimes God will send a problem for everybody so he can speak to somebody in the midst of the congregation. Because so many of us, we're so, we're so uh, individualized. That's on them. No, it's not. You, my brother and sister in Christ, it's not just on me. It's on you, too. I know I, know I should have been mature enough not to get myself in all that trouble, but guess what? I'm in trouble. So give me the speech about maturity when I get out of this thing. Look at verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves. Number one, there was a problem through the prayer and fast. And Judah gathered themselves. See, they were obedient together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. It's not just one person's problem. It's not just the king's problem. It's not just pastor's problem. It's our problem. We are in this thing together. Glory be to God. Don't shout about being a family on the Sunday that everything's going good. But the Sunday you come in here and we ain't got no lights and we ain't got no water and we ain't got no toilet paper. Jesus. Y'all still be with the brother then? <laughs> but they were with them because they didn't say king what did you do king to get these people mad at you they weren't about that because what they were about was trying to deal with how they're going to stop these folks from trying to take them over and, 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 and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord they came to church they came to seek the Lord they came to the temple they say I gotta work I gotta cook some ribs I gotta cook this I gotta cook out I gotta go here I gotta go there I gotta get my hair did they put everything else aside because everybody was in trouble and what God is trying to say to you and I today, that the entire congregation has to come together because if one's in trouble, all is in trouble. And if one is happy, all is in fact happy. But you know, people, we have to get to the point where we begin to understand that we need to be able to receive constructive criticism. You can't keep on taking the church down the same road. You can't go keep on doing the same old thing over and over and over again. Yes, you're my brother and sister in Christ, but get your mind renewed. Instead of getting your hair did and your hair cut, get your mind renewed. Look at verse 5. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. He said, O Lord, God of our fathers. See, you got to know how to pray. So, you see, he said, O Lord, this is in front of the congregation, uh, everybody in Judah. Art now thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdom of the heathen, and in thy hand is in thy power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. Are you not the same God? If you change if you change who you were or who you are, God, let me know. Because i got to lead these people to a place of safety or we got to learn how to fight. But if you're the same God that I'm used to, then we're going to be all right. Look at verse 9. If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. God said, when you follow the instructions, when you do what I tell you to do, what we need to understand from Second Chronicles chapter 20, that sometimes God starts the fight. You didn't start this one. God set this up. Sometimes God will set up the fight. Yeah, 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 come on now. Sometimes God will set it up. And I like what God does here because what he does is he, he gets rid of all the enemies at one time. Bam! He lines them up and he knocks them down. And we try to figure out why they're coming against me. God said, no, just go to my house and call on my name. Because he said, if you do these things, if you come and call upon my name, if you begin to pray unto me, and they said, we know you told us this, and we, that you will help us. You're going to hear us, and you're going to help us. That's one thing you need when you're in trouble. You need to know that somebody's going to help you, and somebody's going to hear you. If they don't, look, if your neighbor ain't home, go to the, the neighbor on the other side. Keep on knocking on them doors. Somebody help me! <laughs> we give up too easy, because our favorite people are not around. So y'all y'all knock on the door where y'all know they got the guns. Y'all, I know grandmama next door had a gun, did you? See, grandmama home. 
And Grandma, okay, baby, I'll be right there. Grandma, I hand you a gun right out the door. Okay, all right. Look at verse 10. Jehoshaphat says, And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when we came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. He's mad now. Because when we came out of Egypt, when Israel came out of Egypt, they did not destroy them. They, they let them go. Amen. Ain't that something you let somebody go and they come back and try to get you? Anybody ever had that situation, you know, you, you let somebody go? And they come back and start talking stuff. Yeah. And look at verse 11. He says, Behold, I say how they reward us. We bless them. Look how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possessions, which thou hast given us to inherit. He said, God, they're trying to move us out of the place that you have given us. Look at verse 12. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them since you did not allow us to choke their necks when we came out of Egypt. Will thou get them, God? You did not allow us to beat them up and annihilate them when we came out of Egypt. Whoa, God, now you see what kind of people they really are. For we have no might. Listen to this. We have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Don't you know your enemies will get together? They hate each other, but they'll get together to get you. I wish I had a witness in here. They hate each other. Your enemies really don't like each other. But in order to get you, they will all come together. They all came together against Jehoshaphat and Judah. He says, we can't do nothing with them. I like this part. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. He ain't had the people all fooled. Look here, y'all. We look, look. We gonna go. Somebody get the trustee. We going to the treasury. We gonna buy Uzis, and we gonna buy flat. You know, we gonna get all our stuff. And you know, so tomorrow we going out. We going out. You know, we going out. Uh, tell the trustee we need like 50 guns, and uh, we need some flat jacks. You know, we need all that stuff. And we going out. He said, No. I don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Everybody in trouble. But look who God responded to. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattaniah, and Levi of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. They are praying to God about a problem, and they begin to pray, and they begin to fast, and guess what happened? The spirit of the Lord fell upon Jehaziel, oh my God, in the midst of the congregation. And look what Jehaziel said. Hearken ye all, Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but be not afraid nor dismayed made by reason of this great I don't care how many things they got counting up against you I don't care what they lining up against you God has spoken to you through his word and he's telling you right now be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God God I don't know how you going to fight it but you said it's your battle and if you going to fight for me I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do that I might I get the victory. Then you got to follow instructions. Get off the cell phone. Get off. Get off the texting everybody. God said he gonna fight for me. Oh, all them going down tomorrow. Yeah. No, listen to the instructions. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. God, something else, ain't he? He giving them. Their strategy, he's giving them their war plan. How God know all this? Because he know everything. He says, tomorrow, go ye down and get them. He said nothing about get your gun, get your knife, get your spear, get your shield. He didn't say anything about that. He said, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. This is verse 17. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. 
just go down to the office and tell them you're here. Wow. Just show up. Got to say nothing. Ain't got to do nothing. Just show up tomorrow. Just show up. A God sent me. Set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Set yourself. Stop being nervous. Stop all the talking. Stop all the chitter chat. Stop talking about King Jehovah's Fat crazy, Pastor Carbon the crazy. Got us out here in this mess talking about, no. See, that's what I like about God. God let Jehaziel somebody they like. Because you get mad with the leader when things go wrong. So they let Jehaziel say it. Somebody they respected. The Spirit of God came upon him. They said, look, go on down there and, and, and set yourself, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with the old Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That's what you need to know. The Lord is with you. That's why you praise God. As we move on down, you're going to find out about this praise. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the heavens of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. They started worshiping God. Wow. When you get an answer to your prayer, don't wait till Sunday. <laughs> Get you a little spot in your house. Sanctify. Get you a little thing of olive oil. Bible. Get you a place where you can just fall out of work. <laughs> Look, if somebody else can put their rug down, never mind. <laughs> we too cute. Go ahead and worship God. God, I thank you. God, I hallelujah. When I first came back to the Lord, this lady, on my job, she scared me. She, she worked where I worked in my office, but I heard something hit against the wall in my office. I said, what is going on? She back there. Oh, glory. I said, somebody call the doctor. Some of you saw all that. She was praising God, and she had gotten some good news about something. But I wasn't used to that, you know. I used to traditional church. You don't be going around shouting and she had something, something called holiness, she said she was. I thought it was holiness. I got scared, but it was holiness. You know? But see, you got to get used to how people praise God. And see, you don't know what folk been through. So you, you, can't, you can't prescribe for them, it don't take all that. I was talking, you, you can't tell somebody, it don't take all that. You just need to get up out of the way. Because sometimes it takes that and some more because of what they've been through. You don't know the kind of life they've been through. You know what I'm talking about, Matt? You don't know what folks been through to get up on this side, to walk into the church with a smile on their face, clothing in their right mind. You don't know what folks been through. But we're going to block them. We're going to stop them. Oh, no. Don't let her praise the Lord. She's going to praise the Lord for 20 minutes, and we're going to get out 20 minutes later. You stop this Christian. Let her get her praise on. Let him get his praise on. Let him work this thing out. If you got to go, go. You ain't going to help him that way. You ain't even pray with him. We all the time there. If it ain't what you want to do. So if you don't want to serve the Lord, you will. Oh, it took too long for that message. But let it be some place where you want to be. If you don't want to be in church, let it be a place you want to be. Oh, I said in line two hours to get this. They had a long line of Macy for two hours. Two hours. In church, you got bad legs, bad ankles, bad thighs. Can't go five minutes without water, but they had something nice as I wanted. Two hours. Ain't no paramedics come. Ain't nobody come. But in church, oh, I got to go. <laughs> Who is God in your life for real, for real? Look at verse 19. The Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohathites stood up to do what? Praise the Lord of God of Israel with a loud voice on high. They, they was worshiping. Somebody said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need some praise up in here. God has answered our prayer. Five minutes ago, I was scared. 
five minutes ago, all these folks, and they still come against me. But God gave me a plan. God's going to deliver us. Why not see? Why not like we still in trouble? When you get out of trouble, praise God. Give God glory. Sing your song. Nobody in the scripture said, no, I'm going to wait till tomorrow to see if God delivered me. Because they trusted God. When you trust God, whatever he... God said he's going to heal you. They roll you in and they talk about what they still see. All you got to do is say, keep on looking. Because it's about to disappear before you. <laughs> see, and they, see they, they praise God. See, they still have to praise the Lord, the God of Israel with a loud voice. And see, when they praise him, the omnipresence turns to his manifest presence. So before tomorrow, he was already with them. See, great is he that's in me. So when he that's in me, hook up with him that's around me. See, when manifest, hooked up with what's on the inside, oh, you got the power. And this is a whole congregation on one accord, believing God for the victory. It's like the book of Acts. They were all on one accord, believing God for the victory. And the Spirit of God fell. That's why you got to praise Him. Praise Him your own way, your own style. But give Him the praise, because He inhabits the praises. He dwells in the praise. He lives in the praise. They didn't wait till they got to tomorrow. The choir said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody's had to say, the musician not here yet. I don't need no musician. I got something within me. It's like fire. That's why when you're going through something, you're not crazy. Smile. Praise Him. He will. Show up. Yes, He will. Yet I declare He will. He'll show up tomorrow. About this time, things are going to change. I'm Pam ain't crazy. The praise and worship, they're not crazy. They found out something. If we praise him, he'll show up. And once he shows up, what the devil gonna do with it now? Praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to say, I dare you. Lord, hey, glory. The battle's not yours. It's the Lord. The battle's not yours. Be still and see the salvation of... It's some more, it's some more shouting here. Look at verse, look at verse 20. It's a more shout. And they rose early in the morning. See, when you got faith and when you trust God, just because you went to sleep last night, the plan didn't change. Some folks get to be punks and cowards in the morning. A few hours in between what God says and when God going to do it. They get afraid. But look at here. They rose early. I like that. They got up early. See, when you're going to win, you get up early. If you don't know if you're going to win, you don't get up early. You get up, but you be walking around, I don't know. You take a long time, put your clothes on when you're afraid. You know what I mean? They rose up early. In the morning, went forth to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, 
Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me. He said, Wait a minute, y'all. Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. He said, oh, Let me do a little check here, make sure y'all still with me. Make sure y'all got a good night's sleep. Make sure nobody ain't scared. Nobody ain't go coward on me. Nobody done run over to the other side. You ever have a friend to go tell the other side what you're going to do? Okay. He said, let me check on that. Look at verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, they were one accord, he appointed what? Now you got somebody in the congregation that said, wait a minute. We're going to fight. What the heck is wrong with your heart of that? We're going to fight these folks. I know God said the battle is not ours but his. I at least want to look like I came to fight. How am I going to go up to these people with a choir of us up high? He put the fingers unto the Lord that, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And that they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. You know that song that says, praise will confound your enemies? That's exactly what happened. Because I'm coming to kick your butt. Let's put it like that. I'm coming to kick your butt, and you got the nerve to meet me and start singing. That, that'll mess anybody up. Come on. All these people came against me. You're mightier than I am. You're going to show up in Tekoa and start singing. Look what happens. Come on now. Look at it. And when they begin to sing and do what? And to praise. And when they began to sing and to pray. That's why I like a worship service. Because sometimes it start off kind of, you know, cool. But as the folks begin to sing and pray, things get a little higher. And they get a little warmer. And they get a little deeper. Folks begin to unfold their arms and open their mouths and raise their hands and give God glory. They forget about what they look like and they remember who they are. Oh, I need somebody that don't mind singing a song and praising God and giving God glory. When they heard them singing, look at verse 23. No, 22. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which will come against Judah, and they, they start fighting each other. God will have the folk coming after you begin to fight each other. Why? Because you praise him. Why? Because he inhabits the praise. Why? Because he showed up. And when he shows up, he helps confound the enemy while you stand there singing. That's why we praise God. They're talking about praise the Lord for his mercy and door forever. Can you believe that? They're going out to war. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Over and over again. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures. You now, PJ, no, do they keep repeating the same thing, but it gets a little better, a little sweeter. Uh, you thought they changed it. They ain't changed the words. They just got deeper into it. It began to mean something. See, there's a thing called penetration of the praise. Hey. You keep on praising God, it's going to begin to mean something to you. Because sometimes it's a thing about repetition. If you keep on saying something to yourself, you might just get, oh, the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be. I got some bad news, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be. I don't have enough money, but I will bless the Lord at all. Because you walk around singing your song. Somebody think you lost your mind. But you're just waiting for God in his, to manifest himself. You already know he's there. So God, I need you to show up in a different kind of way. For the children of Ammon, verse 23, and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. When they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they, helped, they turned around and destroyed each other. And when Judah and when praise, and when Judah and when praise came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, the watchtower, the person in the watchtower was supposed to tell <laughs> the folk that the Israelite, that Judah was on the way. But because they were singing, the fool probably ran down the watchtower, 
They come in, but they sing and they don't have no guns. They don't have no knives. They don't have no spears. They don't have no shields. They just come. They got choir robes on. They got them supplices. That's supplices. They have supplices on. And they're singing. And they're coming towards us. And then they begin to, what do you mean? You stop lying. You're supposed to be on watch. They start fighting each other. And You know why that? They come out and lie just for it. Ain't nobody coming to fight it with no choir rolls on and no sub pieces on with somebody's in Pam in the front of a hallelujah, hallelujah, and they, they got mad and start fighting each other and start killing each other. And you to me, Fred, I think God's trying to let us know don't call yourself something you ain't gonna be. Look at verse 25. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them an abundance, both riches with their dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry. Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days and carrying away the spoil. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. Guess what Baraka means? Praise. Praise on praise. Praise, praise. Huh. You to me, praise. Stay in the valley of praise. Praise, praise. Hey, come on. Somebody pray, praise the Lord with me. What you going to do? For they blessed the Lord right there. Therefore the name of the same place is called the Valley of Baraka unto this day because it was an incredible praise. God is worthy of all the praise. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad in my salvation gives me the ability and the authority and the power to praise God. Everything does not have to be right in my life for me to open up my mouth and give God the glory and give God the praise. I give a testimony in season. I can give a testimony out of season. Why? Because God's been good to me. He's been with me and I'm up and he's been with me right now. I am not my own man. Man. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's a mighty warrior. He's a mighty battle axe. He's the great I am. He's Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. He's that wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's my holy of holies. He's my king of kings. He's my Lord of lords. He's my... I'm going to praise him in season. I'm going to praise him out of season. I'm going to praise him when I got money. I praise them when I don't have money. I praise them when I feel good. I praise them when I feel bad. Why? Because he inhabits the praises. You want God to hang around your church? You want God to hang around your family? You want God to hang around your life? Praise him. Stop looking at people strange. Stop laughing at folks. Look at the way they praise God. If she ain't careful, that we ain't going to come off. If she ain't careful, that peace going to come off. You better praise him because your everything is ready to come off. Your whole life is ready to come off. Christianity is, is, is not spectator. It's participatory. Oh, what does that mean? Get involved, baby. <laughs> It's participant for it. See, you're going to come on and give God the praise. Hey, look, we got some people, you got to pump them up. You got to pump them up, but that's all right. Guess what? We'll pump you up. But after a while, you got to go ahead and sing for yourself. You got to go ahead and do what you got to do. Because guess what? Nobody knows what you've been through but you. And you know the Lord been good to you. You know he's been mighty good. So go ahead. Tomorrow, go down and meet them. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stop living a life of fear and live a life of faith because God has spoken. He showed up and he told you. There's testimonies all over this congregation how God stepped in and how God delivered. And guess what? For somebody in here today, for somebody, he's not through yet. He's only beginning. Do not throw your dreams away. Whatever vision God gave you, hold on to it. Stop talking about, well, I don't know. It don't look like it. I got all this to do right now. The church I'm in right now, they got enough ministries. God ain't asked you all that. He gave you a vision. Keep on praying and keep on praising and watch what God does. Somebody needs healing today. Guess what? You get your healing. Keep on praising them. Keep on praising. He might not show up tonight, but when your next doctor appointment, he might, he might say, somebody's, I saw somebody sitting next to 
I was in my house the other day. Go back to downstairs. I saw somebody tugging at me. I said, whoa. First I was like this. I said, oh, it must be the Holy Ghost. Well, there ain't nobody here but me and my wife. But when God shows up, welcome him. Welcome him in. Because you already praised him. And when you come to church, praise God. Don't let nobody talk to you. In, in service, say, look, shh. I didn't come to talk to you. I came here to worship. I came to, I came to talk to God. If I'm going to talk to anybody, it's going to be God. Hear my number. Call me later. Because I came. <laughs> Sometimes folk will mess you up. You come get your blessing. They got all this stuff. Call me. Text me. Facebook me. Twitter me. Instagram me. But for right now, I'm trying to get these enemies off my back. I come to lift up the name of, and say, don't worry about it. Look, if nobody else is singing, you go ahead and sing. No matter how bad you sing. It sounds good. Amen. Some people won't sing out because they think you got to have the note. Now, you know, for a quiet, but from your seat, you can do whatever. You can be as off as you want to be because it sounds good to God. Amen. You ever see somebody love the Lord so much they don't care how they sound? Just don't sit in front of them on Sunday. That's all. <laughs> All that is all said. The God's been going. Give God praise. God's worthy of all the praise. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There is abundance in praise. There's deliverance in praise. There's healing in praise. There's mercy in praise. There's grace in praise. There's salvation.